Hello and welcome to the B-Side Word. We are here again yet another week. I'm sat here today with Emma. Hello. Devin. Hello. And it's just us three today. And yet again, we're going to talk about interesting articles that mainly Emma has found <laughs> throughout the week. <laughs> I don't know, actually. This week is actually maybe. We'll see. Maybe it was just me. We'll see. Well, this first article... It blew my mind. And I say that a lot, but this was another one. Yeah. This was a mind blower. Okay. So this article, the heading, the title reads, anti-surveillance mask lets you pass as someone else. And there's a picture and there's a group of people in the picture and they all have the same face. They're all wearing this mask with the same face. And you're like, what? I think it's important to note for the listeners that it's, it's a very simple mask, right? It's not like... Yeah, it's not high tech. Oh, yeah. This isn't like a... It's just paper. Yeah. It's like paper cut around the shape of the person's face. And then I think the eye holes have a small <laughs> like hole in them for you to see through. Yes. But... And we'll get to that because actually that's the cheap mask version for... Yes, it looks cheap. For the, ge- oh. for, for the general, you know, not, not uh, <laughs> money, not cash rich. What's the word? Pocket rich. What's savvy. The word? Money savvy. Yeah. That one. So basically, oh, poor, poor this, is, <laughs> this is identity replacement tech. Say hello to the new future, right? Yep. So everyone, you know, talks about how there's all this these surveillance cameras everywhere. Um, nearly, I mean, every street corner at least has a, like CCTV, at least, right? So this guy, Leo Salvaggio, Basically, he lives in Chicago, and that's the most surveilled U.S. city um, with 25,000 facial recognition cameras. And he was like, hmm, stuff this. So what he did is he made a 3D printed resin mask of his own face. You can buy this mask, by the way, on that'smyface.com. And what it did is it rendered his features and his skin tone... And it just looks exactly like Can him. we go so up? Can you go up? What I'll do is we'll show you the picture of his his face with his... So, there's another oh. picture and we'll put it up for you to see. It's this guy with a beanie on, if you scroll down, Max. He's yeah, wearing an it. actual mask. You can kind of tell with the eyes, eyes that the it eyes. looks different. But, Kinda. Kinda. Well, a lot. <laughs> but what's the... That what looks the, freaky, man. It does kind of look freaky, But if you scroll down more, it shows you what it actually looks like on the CCTV because you can only tell when you're in person. But on CCTV, it literally just looks like the guy because it's too far away. So you can't see the minor. To be fair, that's some good cameras. That's some good camera. Yeah. Cameras to get that close. What do you mean? To the face. Yeah, exactly. Right? Huh? Like you're saying if the CCTV could get that close to pick up the eye abnormality, do you mean? It doesn't pick up the eye. No, it looks like a normal face. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, so (laughs) you said, anyway, so basically he's saying if you want to not be recognized on CCTV, then buy my mask. Now, there is the cheap version, which is the paper ones. $99 on Amazon. <laughs> yeah, the cheap ones are a dollar, by the way. Public They're, servant, eh? <laughs> a dollar paper mask or the prosthetic one is only 200 Only. $200. Um, he's not $200. making any profit from this either. So all the proceeds are going to um, sustain URME's effort. I think you are me is who he works for, maybe. Um, but it's to keep surveillance in the public um, discourse. Yeah, the basically. URME surveillance are a venture dedicated to protecting the public from surveillance and creating a safe space to explore our digital identities. Yeah. Uh, straight away, pops in my head, criminals. Mm. That's what he, he actually does men- mention criminals. Does he? Yeah, he does. He says, obviously, he's thought, you know, that people, criminals, could use it. Um, He said, I would, of course, like to believe that others will use these devices responsibly. And I can't be clearer that I do not condone criminal activity. However, it is possible. And I've weighed out the possibility that crime may become associated with me because it looks like him. Yeah. 
<laughs> Why he would said, you choose himself? I don't get I that. Know. He said, that being said, I have to come to the conclusion that it's worth the risk if it creates public discourse around surveillance practices. Although, but think about this. What if he's yeah. a criminal, right? Yes. Oh. And then he yes. does something and he's like, look, how can you pin this on me? There's like 10,000 people out there that <gasps> wear my face. Yes. Do you think that's why he's done it? Like V for it's like, Vendetta. It's like hiding in plain sight. He's like, yes! I, don't, I don't have to wear a mask if I can get everybody else to wear my face. Oh my God. Yes. He's <laughs> like, the rest of the world become me and I can just be me. I don't have to cover up. <laughs> that is the best disguise that ever. That is the best, literally. Hiding in plain sight. Literally. literally. Do you reckon that's how Santa Claus delivers all the presents at Christmas? <laughs> <laughs> he just strolls through like ho 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 and then like you're not the real oh santa he's like santa. oh no i'm not <laughs> <laughs> that is so funny a good idea or a bad idea i think it's i think it's i, I mean, mean i wouldn't wear it but i think it's a pretty cool idea can you imagine it catching on uh, I, don't think I think so. with so that group of people, I think with protesters and activists, um, that's where he also wants to see it take off. So that where the whole group is wearing oh, the same. Oh, that's clever. Yeah, wearing the same mask. That might work. They wear masks anyway, but yeah. it's just like, what? Why wear a very lifelike mask when I assume the existing masks already do the job? Mm. It doesn't take much to beat a uh, CCTV camera today by wearing a mask right true I'm so my sure. question is why is, why do you need to spend 200 dollars to look like somebody else maybe it's in the article somewhere I, i'm trying to rack my brains but why spend 200 dollars to look like somebody else when you could just wear a mask which cost five dollars maybe because and not look like yourself anyway you know yeah but if you're buying a mask it's gonna be like a mask of what just like a mask like um like a picture more so or like a pattern yeah not a pattern but you know what i mean but, whereas but still, yeah they're trying to like oh uh, maybe but what's the objective know. if the objective is just to disguise your own face why not just wear a normal mask why well, yeah. like uh, are you talking about like a bal bal balaclava or are you talking about just a clown balaclava or you see the people like the uh anonymous Anonymous face mask, the V for Vendetta you know, like one. They, yeah, that's the one. Yeah, oh, so there's like yeah, you can yeah. buy anything. Either screen mask, you can choose your mask. Yeah, why? Like, why go out your way to look like this specific person? Maybe um, because I guess it, I guess it's to link yourself to that cause. Yeah, yeah, maybe or because the printed mask. Like, if you're just walking down a busy street, you might not notice. Like, you like people probably wouldn't notice that that's a mask. Just like mm. keep, wear some sunnies or something, you know what I mean? Yeah. The three D, the three D printed resin, right? Yeah. The one yeah, that costs two dollars. Yeah. Oh, he even mm. thinks it's creepy. He said, "Creepy creepiness is, of course, part of the point here, as the it interdisciplinary like... artist takes his face in everyone's face." What? But does it? Anti... It looks like oh, yeah. an alien trying to disguise himself <laughs> yeah. as a human, like MIB, like you remember yeah. the MI, that guy, the Men in Black, yeah, the Men in Black bloke. But it says that it's got um, anti-mask laws. There's anti-mask laws. Yeah, um, In... it says some oh. some states have anti-mask laws. Um, yeah, so I'm not sure about that. Oh, <laughs> but this guy's an artist, few. so um... I think he's just you know doing. It's kind of almost probably a visual arts thing hmm. project as well. It's like a two-in-one. It's uh, it's come down to this. It's come down to creating 3D masks so that people can't recognize us. So they feel like I don't know. Even but if they're he not probably doing... he's probably active on um, Instagram and uh, and Facebook and Twitter. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so he's hiding from all the surveillance, but probably, they're tracking. Probably digitally. tagging his location tagging as well. <laughs> oh, I found this amazing new coffee shop <laughs> <laughs> at Barista Babies. <laughs> But yeah, imagine someone did commit a pretty bad crime and they were like, we have you on CCTV, blah, 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 blah. We've already gone down that narrative. I know, but could you imagine? But then I guess law and order type. <laughs> yeah, law and order type, yeah. <laughs> I don't know, but, but there'd be probable doubt, hey. So he'd get away with it. Probable doubt? Is that what they say? Is that Probable, de probable cause. No, wait, wait. One of the two. Probable <laughs> yeah, something. I think you've mixed it up together. I wanted to sound together, smart in the criminal world. <laughs> What's the word? Reasonable doubt. Reasonable, Reasonable doubt. Reasonable doubt. <laughs> you call them probable doubt. I'm like, what? That doesn't sound I right. I knew it was something, something doubt. 
<laughs> but it is probable cause, isn't it? Probable yeah. cause, mean? reasonable doubt. Yeah. There you go. I mixed yeah. it up. Yeah. Educating our <laughs> listeners from day one. <laughs> well, Tell them what they Leo don't know. Salvaggio, I reckon, you know, it's, uh, you know, it's good to see people fight back a little bit. Max facts, max facts, max facts. <laughs> yes, that'll do. That was good. That was pretty good. That was pretty good. No CJ, no, no CJ, but it was I pretty know, good. I know. We miss you, CJ. Okay. So again, I like to try and keep my max facts as a bit of a question at the same time. Okay. So, the Eiffel Tower stands in Paris, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. If you melted down the Eiffel Tower, and then all of its content was in the base of the Eiffel Tower. Like, right. Does that make sense? Like, yes. The Eiffel I'm Tower is just like... 30 meters wide, 30 meters long, maybe. I don't know. Yep. And if all the all of it was inside that 30 by 30 square, yeah. how tall how tall would the pool of melted iron be? In meters? 10 meters. Wait, 10 how high. tall is the Eiffel Tower anyway? I feel like we I need knew to you were going to ask that. It's 300 meters. Oh my God. Or really? 324 meters to the tip. 10 meters high. <laughs> I'm going to say lucky 12. It would be less than three inches. What? Huh. Why? So it'd be like if you put your thumb and finger uh, like this. Yeah. <laughs> For the listeners? Yeah. <laughs> if you put... <laughs> put the, the listeners like the distance from your you... chin to your eye. <laughs> from your chin to your eye. <laughs> That's probably about three inches. Hang on, that makes sense. Because he said it's 30 by 30. The be- Dev, you're supposed to be good at maths. That's, no, I made it up that's spatial awareness, isn't it? Like, that's nothing no, to do with maths. No, you've got to do maths. 30 by 30, melt it down. Yeah, He said Go it's 300 then. and something high. So 300 divided by 30, it's three inches. Is it? <laughs> okay. Man's what are not you hot, talking quick about? <laughs> Man's not hot, quick maths. That's unreal. <laughs> That's unreal. <laughs> no, it totally makes sense to me in my head. I've got it. No I completely made up the whip as well. Yeah. I don't know how wide it is. <laughs> Okay, the next article is about Australia's very own Uluru. Uh, Maxi, do you know what Uluru is? Where Uluru? Is that the big red rock yeah. thing? Yeah, formerly known as, what was it? What did it used to be? Ayers Rock. Oh yeah, formerly known as Ayers Rock. Yeah. Um, now known as Uluru. Um, okay, so I'm not sure if you know, but they finally closed Uluru for Tourists. climbing. Tourists. tourists to climb um exactly 34 years after it was after the land was handed back to the aboriginal people and because of the closure there was literally thousands of tourists lined up human traffic jam to climb uluru before the very last day and the, the hot pic- everest what do you mean? You know, oh, Everest. the hot Everest. You like that? That's right. Did That's you nice. say I that like or did it. you hear that? No, did you just, just coin that term? I just did it now. Yeah. Oh my god. Off the top of my head. Oh, Off the cuff. You are incredible. Off that the is, cuff. Do you, do you ever write this stuff down? Like, I'm assuming you have these ideas all the time. <laughs> all the time. My black book, I've got about five filled up because of all black these. Book. <laughs> yeah. Other people's black books. Five are ideas or different. just five books. <laughs> <laughs> just five books. <laughs> but. What's crazy is obviously there's a lot of backlash for the for the um for these tourists because there's been signs at the bottom of Uluru for I don't know gosh a few years now isn't it do you reckon Dev um basically stating um you know this is a cultural sig- this is Go cultural up. land of you know high significance yeah um please don't climb yeah but m- you know, a lot of people had started looking at that and saying, fine, we won't. But obviously, then they're like, nah, this is our last chance. We're climbing and just would ignore it. 
and create a lot of traffic. Um, I don't know if anyone died on this occasion, but there's been a lot of deaths over the years since it's been open. And what's your thoughts? Do you reckon? Yeah, go. Would you if you knew it was cl- if it if you knew there was an important spiritual place? where the traditional landowners hated people coming and climbing and ruining and destroying, would you still go if you're like, it's closing down, I've got to do it, I've just got to do it? Or would you not? Or what do you reckon about these people that were lining up like... I mean, if you look at the picture, there's just a crazy amount of people. I don't think these people really understand. I don't think they really understand how uh, how much this means to... The indigenous people. I don't think you they fully understand. Like if you've never, if if you've never had some, do you know what I mean? Like if something is important to you, you you know why it's important, and you get frustrated at people that don't understand. But mm. why would they? These people won't understand because it's not their culture, it's not their tradition, it's not. Even if you say something to someone, people are going to still try to do stuff because they don't understand. <laughs> Yeah. You know what I mean? I don't, like, it's like our ki- telling your kids, don't do it. Like, drugs are bad. And they're like, uh, it doesn't mean anything to doesn't me. doesn't mean yeah. anything to me. Does that make, is that? Yeah. yeah. I mean, they likened it as like saying, would you want us to climb all over your church? That's what they, I think that's what they, like, you know. Mm. That's a way to, for them to sort of understand. But what do you reckon, Maxie? I, I, this picture here. I don't expect I don't anything think... less from people, but like for <laughs> me personally, it's like it's just there's no need. There's no reason to be that disrespectful, you know. Yeah. I mean, maybe some of them. Some of them complete like ignorance, like they yeah. didn't really understand. It's just a big rock, and obviously from where I'm sitting, it is just a big rock, right? <laughs> yeah. But that's the whole point. Like it's just a big rock to me. So then, why would I make decisions? Yeah. Which is going to affect someone where it is more than just a big rock to them. Exactly. So, yeah. I don't know. Personally, <laughs> I, I would, but I can. I fully expect <laughs> people Other to people. not care. And they were getting like, just there was like... a video where people were getting so riled up because they had this massive metal chain because it's a steep rock and a big chain um, for everyone to climb up, right? And obviously, they're like packed on there like sardines. It kind of reminds me of the Mount Everest when we when they're all traffic jam up there. Do you remember? I just said that. Oh. Remember how I just said it was the hot Everest? Oh, right. Okay, yeah. Hello. <laughs> Hello. Um, but then these <laughs> other two tourists started walking not on the train, the chains, and everyone was getting mad at them. It's like, you know, if you're in a traffic jam and you just drive up the um, the elbow. Yeah. What's it called? Yeah, the, the, elbow. Breakdown lane. Yeah, the breakdown lane. On the breakdown lane. <laughs> yeah. So oh, yeah. they're like, what are you doing? Get back in the line. And they're like, we don't need the chains. <laughs> <laughs> And it's just crazy. Like they're going Bust the chains. They let you free. <laughs> <laughs> but I think a, a, like a 12-year-old girl actually slipped down recently yeah. because I don't know if she, I don't know what happened, but I don't think she died, but she fell off the chain or whatever. I don't know. It's just I, bizarre. I, I think maybe, maybe, I don't know if they do this in schools now, but like I think this has to be like a real, a real push to give understanding of the indigenous, indigenous like you think there culture. should be? Did you say? Yeah, yeah, I think there should be because like ours, all I remember like um, we in my school when when I was growing up was like the Aboriginal flag, and then they told us about um, the the Aboriginal stories about the rainbow serpent and all this kind of stuff, right? And that's pretty much it. So we got up to a certain age, and then that was it. It was like a brief, very brief. And then Dreamtime, the Dreamtime is the Aboriginal stories. And you heard a few Dreamtime stories and then that was it. It's like, you know everything there is to know about Aborigines. And it's like, no, we don't. But were you taught in a way where you felt like those people lived among you now? Or did it feel like it was a history? It was like lesson? history. It was like a history and like, I don't know. It, it just felt like, like during that, like when you do the Dreamtime, right, you get involved in it because it's like you're, you're painting mm. The, all the like artwork for it, it's it's interesting, right? And then yeah. I don't know how you do it, like show that so they. Were you still learning it in high school, or was it more primary nah, school? Nah, nah, nah. In primary school, so nothing and, in high school. And early in primary school, yeah. Like once you got. I think um, that's like the the problem with a lot of like uh, the same how they 
teach black history over here and like in how they t teach in Norway about the like uh, Aborigines that lived here first. Um, I always feel like it's always taught as in that's what happened back there and that's how they were back then, that's how we treat them back then. And then without like saying it, they're kind of implying, but now everything's okay. Like now we live together or now they're no longer oh, here right. and now it's our state. Do you know what I mean? Like, right. But it, the history always seemed to stop quite like a yeah. few Correctly. generations back. Yeah. So it doesn't feel like it's your responsibility. Like it happened, we'll teach you up until this era. And oh. now we're in the modern era. Now things are different. You know, now yeah. when you go to science class, you're going to learn about science. You got to like, when you go to, right. I don't know, politics, exactly you learn about different things. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So when you think about these people, like you don't think about the people today, when you, could you imagine these people, like, I don't know, like in, like when, when you think about black slaves, you imagine them being slaves and trying to like fight for their lives. And then today you see a black person and they're not trying to fight for their lives in the same way. They're like, they're struggling to get money. They're struggling to like get out of like all these social yeah, stereotypes yeah. and stuff. But that's not what you were taught back then. So you're like, oh, that's a different thing. This is a different issue now. Yeah. Even though it all stems yeah. from the same place, you know? Yeah. Oh, well, I know. So exactly. yeah. interesting. Yeah, I like that. That's true. Very true. I like that. It has to, I, I don't know how they're going to do it. I don't, know, I don't know where to start, but they have to incorporate... They've got to incorporate the Aboriginal culture throughout Australia. To, yeah. I know. I feel like uh, this is my oh, just my know. opinion. My I won't opinion. get too deep, but I feel like there's other countries where they embrace their Indigenous people a lot more. Embrace. Embrace. Mm, that's the word. Do you know where? Do you know? Uh, okay, I'll, I'll name drop. <laughs> you just you just you just feel like that. I'll name drop. <laughs> I didn't want. I didn't really want to get too really deep. Really good feeling. <laughs> Well, they embrace I feel like in stop. New Zealand, they embrace the Maoris a lot more than uh, Australians you know, you know, embrace I'd, their I'd like to ask the Maoris, like our perception when we went over there, it was like it seemed like that, right? But I'd like to ask the Maoris over there if you they feel yep. more in, like if it's yep, no, that's not true. integrated, like more, um, I don't know, mixed. I don't know. You, you know what I mean? Yep. No, that's true. Um, what's funny is this, oh my gosh, I don't know if you've heard of One Nation, um, Maxi, but the Senator Pauline Hanson got stuck up Uluru last year <laughs> when she was trying to protest against the ban. <laughs> what? <laughs> yeah. Oh, don't you just love it? What's she, the word? She protested. <laughs> against the ban, but she got stuck. Which, so she was climbing Uluru to protest the ban. Yeah. She got stuck. And then how did she get down? Because I probably had to help her. <laughs> oh, so she didn't get... <laughs> she got stuck. She okay. needed assistance. Okay. I don't know the full story. <laughs> well, you think she's still there? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. So you're going like, so to build a fence there. around her? She's going to get stuck <laughs> in forever? <laughs> hey, there's Pauline Hanson. <laughs> <laughs> how, how tall is uh, this rock? Ooh. One minute warning. I don't know, but that girl that I told you about, she fell at least 20 meters whilst descending. Let's see. Um, Uluru doom, doom, height. Doom, doom, doom. It is. Can you guess? Ooh. Uh, I ha we had this question in a quiz recently. I just can't remember the answer. Is it in meters? It's, it it's in meters. meters. Yeah, half of meters. What, I'm what am say I asking that? Um, 2,000. 2,000 meters? Wait, I don't know how much that is. Okay. Is that uh, a lot? Yeah, I'm going to take That's it away. Kilometers. I'm going to take it away. Um, I'm going to say... Maybe it's 2,000 meters. I'm going to say 450. No, that's a long way. I'm going to say <laughs> 200. <laughs> this is great for the listeners. <laughs> what do you think, Dev? Uh, I'll go 250. We'll just go 250. It's 863 meters high. Oh, what? 63 meters high. So it's half a mile upwards. Wow. Oh, nearly a kilometer. Do you know what I found really interesting about your trailer thought, though, Emma, was you said, well, the woman fell 20 meters, so <laughs> 2,000 meters? <laughs> I feel like 2,000 meters might get you to the outer edge of the earth. No. What? How 2,000 meters. How f Google it. How far is it to the, to the, to the atmosphere, whatever, to the edge of Earth? Outer edge. It is 10 miles to the ozone layer. 10 miles. Which is in kilometers. What's that? Like six? 16 kilometers. So it's 16,000 meters. Yeah, 16 kilometers. It's not that far, is it? What? 
Well, I mean, you could just drive to bloody Parramatta. Oh, okay. I see what you're saying. The, ed- the edge of the saying. earth. Edge is the ozone lane on the edge. I just I just googled the ozone. ozone oh, okay, layer. I don't know. Okay, guys. Yo. When you drive through the city, any city. Yes. Um, what's one of the main things that you see? Not the street, not the pavements, but looking up. <laughs> <laughs> the billboard lampposts okay no 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 clue it's a type of building <laughs> a type of a skyscraper yes skyscraper specifically glass specifically. skyscrapers yeah we see heaps of them right I yeah mean, i work in one <laughs> um actually it's not really a skyscraper but i'm just talking any sort of big building. multi-level glass building yes there's calls for those to be banned because <laughs> It's bad for the environment uh-huh. because okay, a glass building mm-hmm. that big is like a greenhouse and therefore the people inside the greenhouse aren't tomatoes. They don't love the heat. They're going to get hot and need air con. Yeah. So all that air con is being wasted to cool people down because they decided to build a glass building. Oh. All that air con is bad for the environment. The running Can't you it, just use cetera, uh, cetera. blinds? Yeah, but you could, but how efficient are they? And also, I feel like if you, because our blinds at the office are down all the time, you go in and it's really like dark and like, eh. And if you're going to use blinds anyway, why are they building a glass one? Food for thought. Food for thought. Because the alternative is in the winter, that uh, if it's cold, then you take the blinds up and then you get free heat from the sun. Oh, that's true. Which you can't do if you don't have a glass building. Hmm. Yeah, but if you just bought, like built a normal <laughs> building, skyscraper that wasn't glass, but you had good yeah. insulation, you don't need, you yeah, don't need it. How, how dull would it be inside like... Uh, a normal building that wasn't like built in the last... I mean, if you don't years. look outside, why would you... I don't know. I, I don't work in an office, but uh, if... If everything was just walls, it'd be boring. That's how it's been for the majority of the time. <laughs> what do you mean? <laughs> Glass ones that haven't been around for that long. Walls everywhere. You I mean, have some windows, right? Yeah, you got to have some I mean, windows. You got to have windows, but these are literally floor just to all, ceiling glass. Oh, right, right, right. So you just want to get rid of all my, the. My feeling is, how, where did this article come from? Like, my feeling is, if done properly, you can have a glass skyscraper. How about triple glazed or something? I know that's going to be pro- pretty expensive. Mm. No, the the radiation goes through glass anyway, right? Like, oh. I don't think too much of it gets stopped. Like the heat, triple glazing won't stop the heat. It It'll won't stop, stop the, the heat. <clears throat> not well, not the very well. The article is huh. in. It's if the light's down. getting through, then the radiation's getting through, right? That's why you can see the light. It's in the same. Yeah, okay. Segment. Well, did you know, yeah. for, according to this article, by the way, which was from the Wired.co.uk website. So far, glass <laughs> gla- glass skyscrapers have melted two cars, <laughs> a lemon, and a bottle of Lucasade. <laughs> and that's only and there's more than that. That's what? just a few to mention. What? The- and that's been melted <laughs> two by two cars, a lemon, and a bottle of Lucasade. <laughs> that, those have been melted by London's walkie-talkie building I, by I, the <laughs> heat radi- radiating off of the glass, like the reflecting off the glass. Yeah, and that's only a few of the items. <laughs> <laughs> two cars <laughs> i remember this article i put this article because of that and then you brought up then you brought up the people inside aren't tomatoes and i was like what <laughs> this is not what i read so you try you totally changed the article that i put in there like the narrative in. did i get it in no did you i got get it in, in but it was just the go. narrative that i had was that the reflection off the heat off the building no, was melting the <laughs> outside of the building not the people inside of the building you totally changed it no, did you read another you article you didn't read down the article was about the people inside oh, in the aircon oh okay <laughs> okay <laughs> you just read the header and you're like yep that sounds interesting <laughs> Okay, so this next article is just quite interesting, actually. Um, the title, is that what it's called? Heading. 
reads, rats trained to drive tiny cars and they find it relaxing, scientists report. Um, so basically, um, they have been teaching in a lab these rats to drive these cars, which they have made, little cars, um, and re- <laughs> rewarding them with Fruit Loops. And they have found that it's lowered their stress levels and they're hoping that this could teach us about anxiety. Well, just feeding him Fruit Loops. <laughs> so um, they did this study on rats because um, it demonstrates how sophisticated rats' brains are, but could one day help in developing new non-pharmaceutical forms of treatment for mental illness, right? I don't exactly know how. But <laughs> because um, isn't it isn't it to do with how they can get rats to relieve stress? Yeah. So the... isn't the idea of like they're trying to give a rats a certain lifestyle and figure out what kind of things affect their stress levels? Yeah. Um, and certain activities, and then figuring out why those activities work, and then telling humans to do the same. Yeah. So Kelly Lambert, she's the senior. Wait, author. can I ask a question? How Go. are the rats? Are they saying the rats' uh, brains as are as complex? As human brains? Oh, they're definitely not as complex, no. I'm like sure. similarly, like ratio-wise? Uh, what if they find... Anyways, go, continue. I'm maybe, not sure maybe. because they do a lot of experiments on rats, so there must be something... Rats rats brains must be pretty complex, but I don't think they're as complex as ours, for sure. Hmm. Interesting. Yeah, but they like I guess they share some of the same principles. Yeah. Like, they're biology, right? And they have a brain which makes decisions to eat, digest... Yeah. Do a lot of very basic things. So huh. I think if you said actually your level of complexity, like in terms of it would probably be like an eighty percent as complex, but then the twenty percent is makes all the difference, you know. Yeah. Huh. And also right. their body. But that's my assumption. <laughs> I, I don't know. <laughs> also their body. It's easier to maintain a little body like that. <laughs> Have you ever tried to control a tail? <laughs> that's hard work, man. That's why they can't think like us. Oh Too busy God. controlling that massive tail at the back end. Twenty percent is the tail. <laughs> So Kelly yeah. Lambert, she's a senior <laughs> author and she's interested in neuroplasticity um, and from the University of Richmond. So she's interested in how the brain changes um, in response to experiences and challenges. Um, and that's why she wanted to see how well rats would perform doing this test in a more natural setting, a.k.a. enriched environment where they get to learn new things, etc., cetera, etc., cetera. Um, rather than just keeping them in a lab, basically. Um, I have another question go. for the group. Um, neuroplasticity, right? Yeah. At what age do we just, like, our brains Stop. don't want to change? Like, uh, what mind, like, does that make sense? Like, is there a it, certain... I reckon there's never, I don't reckon there's an age. You don't, you don't think there's an age where humans just don't want to change? <laughs> Don't want to or yeah, unable like, to? Or unable to. That's a good point. Oh, that's true. Unable to. Unable to. I think when you're getting diseases such as dement- like um, dementia, Alzheimer's, then it's, there's probably a lot of areas that are unable to. But other than those brain diseases, I reckon it's. I reckon there's always... Some- as long as the body's willing to, to try? Like what I'm saying is, you know how like there's new tech... That have come along and the older generation find it hard. Is that because they're new, like they're? I think things will take longer, maybe to learn for sure. Mm, maybe maybe it's leading uh, to something else. According to um, a random graph I found on <laughs> Google Images, <laughs> according to scienceforsport.com, and another one which says. Car and pop em, I don't know, but they all look very similar. Which is, uh, there's two versions. There's either one which is when you're born, you're like super, super neural, neurally plastic. Yeah, you see it. Neur- mm. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and then you sort of lower a little bit through your sort of early up to ten years old, and then you peak in your teenage years. Like that's the most. Yeah. That's when you're going to change the most. Yeah, and it's like a slow decline over time for the rest of your life. Mm-hmm. Huh. But there's no like hard. It looks like, There's as no a percentage, like 
by the time you get to 80, you're at about 20% left. So yeah. I'm guessing you could say it takes 20% more time to yeah. change, to learn the same thing. Um, and then, yeah, so that's, that's an there estimate, and I, an I reckon estimate. that's about right. Huh. There you go. That's interesting. Can we talk about this car that they made? Okay, let's talk about that car. It's a robot kit, robot car kit. Yeah. By adding a clear plastic food container to form a driver compartment <laughs> with an aluminium plate on the bottom and then a copper wire threaded horizontally across the cab. We're going to have to post a picture of this because yeah. it's very difficult to imagine this. Um, to form three bars, left, center, and right. And basically the mouse um, places itself on the aluminium floor and touches the wire. Yeah. <laughs> the circuits then complete, and then the car moves in the direction that it selects. And it, it, when it you likes s- the I've voltage. I watched a video of this. Yeah, I watched the video, and they put the food in, like, like they place a car. There's a food, like, in one place, and then they place yeah. the car at different places and the mouse just drives to the food every time like it has to do three po- has to turn around spin go in the right direction it gets to the food every is there time. a video of this yes i want to see this okay i'll show you the video <laughs> we'll have to play that is li- gone like <laughs> this is bloody amazing here's a question whilst he tries to find the video dev oh. yeah if gorillas became really good at driving or chimpanzees are like oh. amazing at driving cars would you trust a chimpanzee more or a self-driving car more Oh, wow. What the hell kind of question is that, Maxi? <laughs> um, oh. oh, man. That is one hectic question. I guess, I guess I would go with the self-driving car. Okay, listen to me, right? Yeah. Because <laughs> it's more predictable than a gorilla and a chimpanzee. Because... How about if the gorilla is driving and then he sees his girlfriend in another gorilla's car <laughs> and he just flips it? You know what I mean? In another just... gorilla's car. Are you talking, to, are you talking about CJ? <laughs> <laughs> he just flips it. And all I go, sir, can you slow down? And he starts chasing up with the car. You know what I mean? <laughs> oh, yeah, man. Okay. Yeah, that's true. This is true. This is true. Oh, is it? Yeah. Thanks. <laughs> Thanks for uh, believing my narrative. <laughs> Can Maxi see this video? Maxi, have you? Did, I've, I've seen the video as well. Seen I've seen it. All right. So All right. video's on. Yeah. Car is placed in the center of the room. Oh, what? Scientist the freak? places food. Rat. Ma- oh, is it a rat? Yeah. Drives car. Full to turned. Food. What? This is unfreaking real. Isn't it crazy? It's like um, it's just like a, a crackers container <laughs> or an old flower container or but, something like that. But for me, the ability for this rat to like pick up that picking up left, right, straight. This I is know. freaking amazing. I know. And turn, like you know, when you turn. So like, the, is this car when you just press right, it just rotates right? It just must rotate right. It doesn't turn right. There's left, yeah. center, right. So it I don't just know must rotate. It doesn't turn. Like otherwise, you'd have to press right and straight to have a curve. You know what I'm saying? It looks like it's. It looks like one at a time. One at a time. Yeah. When I watched it, it looks like yeah. drive. He gone too far. He stops driving and he turns. It rotates. Yeah, towards rotates. The yeah. Streets and then he drives forward again. Yeah. If, he, if he rotates too much, he then goes to the other side and puts it back. Yeah. And then goes forward. Man, that's a. That's amazing. I know. Driving really racks. There you go. But I don't like how he stops. Because <laughs> he, he just uses, crashes into it. uses the barrier he as the brake. He doesn't have a brake. I understand. Maybe they didn't introduce that yet. <laughs> Instead. <laughs> he has no, his, he can't maneuver his feet from the back of his body to hit the brake. Oh, he could use his, his spare <laughs> he's got, hand. He's got four. Yeah, legs. but two of them are at the back. Unless he just like hops through, like swings his <laughs> legs under and through. <laughs> Well, he has to sit on a chair like we do then. <laughs> For the moment, he's like, he's running around inside the car, right? He hasn't got a seat. Yeah. 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 He's just in this little space yeah. and he runs to one side, touches it, runs to the other, touches it, and then touches it in the middle. Oh. oh. Yeah. It's pretty amazing. I know. Driving rats. Would you, who'd have thunk it? Well, you had driving monkeys, you know, in what? the little toy cars. Or was it, were they winding <laughs> up and they were they just getting, <laughs> you know the ones I'm talking about? No. 
What do you mean? I don't uh, know. Have you, have you look at like there's some amazing animals out there. They do skateboards. Oh, I have seen skateboarding dogs. And surfing dogs. Oh yeah, I've seen those. Yeah, I'm trying to look for oh. animals that can drive, and I'm just getting a lot of spoofs of look at animals. This. Which one? We, we, looked, we looked at, the, and it goes: Indian bus driver suspended for letting monkey drive. No, go back. What? Yeah, <laughs> Indian Indian sus- <laughs> suspended um, bus driver. <laughs> <That's crazy. laughs> oh my gosh, the world! What have we come to? At what point? A bus driver has been suspended in India after video footage emerged of him letting a monkey drive his bus. What? <laughs> That's crazy. <laughs> Those monkeys. I want to see this monkey. <laughs> ah, he's only doing the steering. Yeah, he's only doing the steering. Wheel. Only. Yeah. The... Oh my gosh. <laughs> oh my gosh. Oh no, monkeys the bus. Are a small monkey. Oh, no, the bus driver's still He's got still it. Holding it. He's just riding the steering wheel. Yeah. Here you go. Here's some, here's some uh, rat facts yeah, go. that we can just finish off on. And then maybe you might see rats in a different way after this list. Okay. <laughs> so firstly, rats take care of the injured and sick in their group. Oh. Without companionship, rats tend to become lonely and depressed. Oh. Oh. Rats have an excellent memory. Once they learn a navigation route, they won't forget it. Oh. Wow. London cabby. <laughs> uh, Maybe that's rats why. Rats make happy laughter sounds when they play. What, what was that? What was that? that? So again, rats, they laugh when they're playing. Huh. I've never heard a uh, rat laugh. <laughs> I want to know what... And also, a rat can go longer than a camel without having a drink of water. Huh. What? These little super animals. Take them for granted. I wonder if they drink sewer water. I think they drink and eat anything. And that's why they're so adaptable. Like would they'd be the last them and cockroaches, they'd be the last um uh animals or insects on earth if a nuclear disaster happened, right? <laughs> they'd be they'd be the only ones left, wouldn't they? I don't know. I know cockroaches. I don't know. But this is a, this is an interesting one. They found out about rats. Is rats succumb to peer pressure just like what? humans. What? So brown rats are prone to disregard personal experiences in order to copy the behavior of their peers. The urge to conform is so strong that they will even choose to eat unplata- unpalatable food if they are in the company of other rats who are eating it. What? You know all this, what you've described so far is Master Splinter. What? Everything that you just said. <laughs> Is like Master Splinter. <laughs> it's like what? the whole thing. Every time, like, TMNT, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, Master Splinter. Yeah, yeah. Oh. I know, I know what you're talking about. But he is he like? Yeah, this? You, you've you've pretty much described Master Splinter. Well, they, they got it. They got it spot on. Maybe maybe these scientists were studying. <laughs> <laughs> maybe they were the producers, <laughs> Mutant Ninja Turtles, as a as a like a study study a case study. Because he loves his. He took care of all the turtles when they came oh. down. You know what I mean? He's really... Mm-hmm. Oh. You know what? I'm not scared of rats, but I wouldn't like in my house where I where it's like running around trying <laughs> to get out. I'm not scared of rats as long as they're in someone else's house. Like if they're out... Like <laughs> if it was outside, I wouldn't be scared of it. But if, it was, if I was locked in a room, yeah, I'd be scared. Okay. <laughs> well, there you go. That's rats. <laughs> they can drive cars and they get lonely and depressed oh. if they don't have friends. All right, everyone, thanks for watching this week's episode of the B-Side Word. Make sure if you enjoyed it to hit that like button. If you want to see more, hit that subscribe and drop us your thoughts in the comments down below. Hit the bell, hit the bell. Hit the bell, hit the bell. bell.